Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Arachimaru manipulated Naruto something unexpected this is part 1, and before getting into video. I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is. The Living Dead by. Sweet Tragedies, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series. Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Do you need any help? I need to speak to the Hokage a tall dark man replied to the guard. The guards eyed the stranger suspiciously, he looked normal enough to them, but had a strange aura about him. He wore black pants and a deep navy blue shirt, a kunai pocket placed on his right thigh, a black mask that reached under his nose, covering the lower half of his face, his hair was a muddy blonde, but what really made them wonder was his eyes. They were a beautiful yet charming blue color, almost a soft shade of sapphire, he had looked like a missing min to the men. Is she accepting you sir? The other guard choked out, regaining his former posture. The man just shrugged suppose not. The two guards glanced towards each other, exchanging questioning looks they turned back to the stranger who was awaiting their answer. I'm sorry but we can't. It's important the man stated not bothering to look up at them, they both glanced over to each other again. One guard raised an eyebrow to the other Chunin, by the tone of his voice he realized that it must have been quite important. We can't just let anyone see Hokage they all turned around to see the Anbu leader, Ichiha Sasuke leaning casually on a tree. Especially someone who doesn't give a reason he turned to look at the three men. The stranger turned and made eye contact with the Anbu captain, Sasuke had grown taller, but his hair still had stayed the same look, he had more muscles and looked a lot stronger than he used to be, his Anbu mask was in the shape of a fox it made him look out of place, the man almost snickered at the mask. He quickly took his gaze off him and turned back to the Chuanan guards, and he gave them what looked like a smile from behind his mask. Well, thanks anyway he said smoothly, everyone took a step back, if it was that important he would have put up more of a fight. I guess I have to break in with it he ran up to the two dumbfounded Chuanan guards. They both embraced themselves for the force of being hit, crossing their arms in front of them in a blocking stance they waited for the impact to hit them. Not feeling any force upon their arms, they opened their eyes just in time to see the stranger flying over the gate and began to run over rooftops to the Hokage's headquarters. He'll never learn Sasuke sighed and jumped over the gate in unison to the young stranger, leaving the two Chunin still dumbfounded. These fast Sasuke admitted trying to keep up with the dark fuzz getting further and further in front of him. Sharingan his onyx eyes turned a deadly red with three black marks around his pupils. Soon enough he spotted the path of the stranger, picking up his pace he raced ahead of the stranger stopping right in front of his path, causing the man break into a speeding halt in front of him. The strange man had an impatient look on his face, but also amused. The security here isn't that good is it? The man asked, half amused. Sasuke frowned from behind his mask, he didn't like the tone of his voice. Well, I must be going before Sasuke could register the stranger had bounded off once again. Oh no, you don't Sasuke growled and began charging after him. Sasuke slowly caught up with the stranger, he tried to knock him over, but failed many times as he easily leapt over his attacks. Sasuke began to get impatient with him, he threw himself at the stranger, causing them to crash through one of the walls of the Hokage Tower. Geez you bastard if you wanted to fight you could have just asked the stranger pushed the wounded Ichiha from his stomach and up against a wall, Sasuke groaned slightly and got up, but the stranger's words had gotten to him. Sasuke clenched his fists in rage, he looked towards the bored looking man. No one but him was allowed to call me that Sasuke charged towards him, in an outburst of rage, his hand began to glow light blue. The stranger gulped loudly as he felt the force of the Chidori come into contact with his chest, making both of them fly into the room behind them, also known as the Hokage's office. They crashed through the wall, the stranger flew into the wall behind the Hokage, while Sasuke stood in front of the large hole that he had created from his Chidori. What the heck is going on? Tsunade spoke out in rage, the Anbu that was previously with her had left in fright. Hey, Tsunade Baba the stranger said as he slowly wobbled to his feet, Sasuke mouth gaped behind his mask. H how did you? Sasuke stuttered he was lost for words, no scratches were visible on his body, and the man just raised an eyebrow at him. Sasuke please go get your as she sighed, Sasuke just nodded and left without a fuss trying to get his head together. So you're back, eh? She said, leaning back in her chair. Thanks for the welcome he replied sarcastically. Why did you come back? She asked, completely ignoring his comment. I need to warn you about something Naruto replied in a serious tone, she raised an eyebrow at him. What? She asked, confused. Tsunade, what did you want? A man with long white hair entered the room, he had two red markings from eyes reaching down to the bottom of his cheeks. Yo, Hiro Sen and the blonde stranger waved to the confused man. Ujureya whispered in shock. 
Sasuke waited behind Jiraiya, trying to decipher what on earth was happening and how it all included this strange man, Jiraiya, and the Hokage seemed to know him and what they were all talking about, Sasuke eagerly wanted to understand it all. Jiraiya tried to suppress wanting to hug the young man to death, even Tsunade had to try as well. So what was the warning for? Tsunade asked, impatiently. Akatsuki he replied plainly. What? She said loudly, in confusion. And Arachimaru they were all dumbfounded. He can't be. He's coming this way the man said sternly, the recent missing nins are with him and Akatsuki, as well they have been going through many places, already Arachimaru will be leading them here soon, I can tell. But I thought Ujureya and Tsunade started in unison, but stopped when the man shook his head. After that day, he took over the body of someone else he sighed, lowering his head slightly. I see Tsunade said, thinking over the situation. What about you? The man looked up at her, she continued, how's the QP? Sasuke gasped. I'm still not taken over yet he gave a large grin from behind his mask, but it has gotten worse he sighed. Oh, I understand Tsunade nodded towards him, Jureya finally spoke up. I guess we have to be careful then he sighed and nodded at the same time. No. Way it can't be Sasuke was on the verge of a mental breakdown, he grasped his head between his fingers, as if he was in pain. That was it, Sasuke had snapped, he lunged himself at the young man again and pressed him up against the wall behind them. He placed his arm firmly across his neck, causing the man to stop breathing. Sasuke's hot breath ran down his neck, he pulled up his own mask to get a good look at the mysterious man, his hand touched the top of his mask, he gently ran his finger over the top of it, and he latched his fingers around the rim of it. He pulled down his mask to reveal three whisker-like scars, marking both his cheeks. Naruto his arm pressed down further on his neck we all thought you were dead Naruto choked, as more weight pressed against his neck. Stop that now or he will be dead, Tsunade ordered, Sasuke glared at Naruto before letting him fall to the ground, gasping for air. Well, we'll go prepare for Orochimaru's arrival they all nodded, she continued Sasuke warned the Anbu about this alright. Yes, Hokage-sama Sasuke said politely, bowing sensibly. See you Naruto pulled his mask back over his face and he approached the door to leave. And just where are you going? Tsunade questioned as Naruto turned on his heel to face her. Away. He stammered as he pointed towards the doorway. Oh no you're not. She ordered, slamming her hands down on the desk, everyone flinched you can't leave now you're staying right here you brat. But I can't Naruto whined. You almost defeated him one so I'm sure you can do it this time she admitted. Naruto nodded I guess he thought over this and continued, but where can I stay? The Hokage sighed and fell back into her chair you're right for once Naruto huffed at the rude comment. Good, now I'll be leaving he sighed, trying to leave again. W wait, you can stay with me Sasuke managed to blurt out, stopping Naruto in midair as he was about to leave the room. Sasuke got an uneasy feeling when all eyes landed on him, he kept a bored expression on his face as Naruto, Tsunade and Jiraiya's mouths gaped wide, they all knew Sasuke was antisocial, so it was very strange news to them. Very well then the Hokage choked out and nodded towards Sasuke. You can't be serious Tsunade Baba Naruto hissed in fury. Well, we have to keep you safe and make sure you don't run so, yes. I am serious, she stated, crossing her arms. Naruto sighed angrily, Sasuke's face twisted into a scowl. Does he really want to leave that badly? Sasuke's scowl deepened, he forcefully pulled the mask back over his face and dragged the protesting blonde out of the office. For the whole walk to the Ichiha residence they were silent, Sasuke would take quick glances over at Naruto who was in the same position each time, his head was lowered and he continued to stare at his feet, he seemed to be in very deep thought, this worried Sasuke, the teenager he once knew was gone, his hair or eyes didn't seem to have the same shine they once had. Sasuke began to get a worried feeling about the whole new Naruto, Naruto looked up to Sasuke, Sasuke gave a deep frown behind his mask, his eyes showed no emotions, he was no longer the bubbly knucklehead most people knew him at, he was most of a fragile soul trying to mask his pain. Naruto Sasuke turned back as Naruto returned to looking at his feet and where he was placing them on the ground. What's happened to you Naruto? Tsunade paced around the hospital beds, waiting for Naruto to regain consciousness, he had been out for three days she was holding on to dear hope that he would wake up from his endless lumber, but was she just clinging on to blind hope? Sakura waited eagerly at another bedside, lying in the bed was an unconscious Acha, he had fainted not much later than Naruto had. Sakura's strawberry locks hovered above Sasuke's face, she shared the time to also wait for Naruto's awakening, her emerald eyes were filled with worry for the young man, Sakura was hoping that Naruto's wounds had not affected him enough to die. Two days earlier was a grim day for Konoha. Orochimaru had taken control of Sasuke's body, Naruto having a true fight with the Ichiha prodigy in at least three years, their last fight had left Naruto unconscious and the dark-haired shinobi as a missing nin. 
Orochimaru had returned with Akatsuki, recent missing nins from Sound, and of course Azkeicha. Kanoha had been ready for Orochimaru's return for years. Tsunade was in her office explaining to Naruto the situation so he would not mess it up, she noted that he was their weapon if they had needed it, only moments later Ichuanan had teleported into the office of the Hokage. Okage-sama, they have broken through the gates already the man frantically choked out. Warn the village and get more help. She ordered the Chuanin, standing abruptly. Hi. The Chuanin nodded and teleported off. Now, Naruto. Forget everything I told you about being the weapon, this could get serious we need your help now she turned to see the young man nod his head, a serious look marked his face. Tsunade. Jiraiya called out as he burst through the doorway. What is it? Her voice filled with concern. Orochimaru is getting closer, we need more help. Jiraiya panted out, Tsunade looked towards Naruto. Right. She nodded, Naruto looked up to her waiting gaze Naruto we need your help now. Naruto knew this was serious, he never got called upon so quickly, he wasn't as strong as an Anbu, so it must have been dangerous for them to ask so much of him, so quickly. I understand Naruto said. They all left towards the soon-to-be battlefield. A large snake slithered forward as the fight was getting closer to the village, perched atop the large beast were two figures. Naruto looked as close as he could, the two figures turned out to be Kabuto and Sasuke, Kabuto looked how he had always looked, except his hair had grown longer, and he was slightly taller than last time, a smirk played across his lips, and he saw the many defeats of Anbu and other ninja. Sasuke was slightly taller than when Naruto had last seen him, a maniacal smile tugged at his lips, and the look in Sasuke's eyes was not normal, it was Orochimaru, it was bloodlust. Nice to see you again, Tsunade, Naruto and Jurei Orochimaru boomed, Naruto tensed as his name left Sasuke's lips. Orochimaru Naruto whispered to himself in fury, clenching and unclenching his fist in rage. They all heard Orochimaru's maniacal laugh erupting from atop the snake, from Sasuke's mouth. I swear I will kill you. Naruto screamed out from below the snake, Orochimaru laughed again. Still the same idiot, I see Orochimaru said, slight amusement creeping into his voice. That's it Orochimaru Jurei boomed, this is the end. Finally he chuckled, this will be fun. Naruto went to approach the large snake when a pair of hands stopped him by grasping his shoulder. No, Naruto Tsunade sighed, let Jiraiya finish him. Not a chance, Tsunade Baba. Naruto protested, trying to wriggle out of her grasp. I said she was cut off by Jiraiya. Let him do it Tsunade Jiraiya spoke in a serious tone. What? He could be killed. She screeched, Jiraiya shook his head in protest. I will not let that happen Jiraiya stated, cracking his knuckles let's go Naruto. The 15-year-old nodded and ran after Jiraiya, they both used chakra to run up the massive snake's scaly body, they soon made it to the top of the snake's head without fault, amazingly. Orochimaru would have given his congratulations to the young boy if he weren't such a hard ass. Naruto and Jiraiya panted slightly, they soon regained their postures and surveyed the area, Kabuto and Sasuke stood there both having deep smirks plastered onto their faces, their arms were crossed waiting for the two men to attack her to speak. Kabuto Orochimaru whispered to the young man beside him, Kabuto nodded and lunged at Naruto. Holy sh Naruto cursed as Kabuto's weight knocked him off his feet. Naruto kicked his legs in an upward motion into Kabuto's stomach, giving him enough time to scramble from underneath the man. Kabuto regained his posture as soon as Naruto left him, Naruto grabbed out three shurikens and threw them in Kabuto's direction. Kabuto caught them with ease and smirked. That all you got. He mocked, throwing them back faster to Naruto. Naruto quickly dodged a three before a fourth one lodged itself in Naruto's shoulder, Naruto ripped it from his flesh, ignoring his now bleeding and wounded shoulder, he let a mischievous smirk tugged at his lips. They were a distraction the smirk left his lips, he tossed a bloodied shuriken to the ground won't get me that easily again. Naruto charged for Kabuto, who had readied himself into a fighting stance. Naruto threw a punch, which was caught by Kabuto, Naruto took a chance and threw his leg around in an attempt to knock him over, which he did successfully. Kabuto flew over to the edge of the snake's head, pulling himself back up, he placed his hand on either side of his head and snapped it to the side making a pop sound emerge, Naruto scrunched his nose in disgust. Looks like they are having fun over there Rachimaru gestured towards the fighting to Jiraiya. Orochimaru anger sounded in Jiraiya's voice this ends here. Orochimaru stifled a laugh for you maybe. Jiraiya bit his thumb and began performing seals, but stopped suddenly as Naruto spoke up during his fight. If you summon him, the village will be destroyed. Naruto strangled out while trying to hold off Kabuto. Jiraiya stopped the summoning, Orochimaru took this as an opportunity and came forward, he knocked Jiraiya's chin, causing him to stumble backwards. Lucky shot Jiraiya mumbled under his breath, wiping away blood trickling from his mouth with the back of his hand. Maybe Orochimaru smirked but this won't be. Sasuke's hand began to glow light blue, the deep maniacal smirk returned to his face. Jiraiya gulped down his saliva, loudly. 
He was in no position to be jumping off the snake and leaving Naruto to Orochimaru's wrath, he felt the chakra rising in Sasuke's hand. He bravely stood still and awaited his fate. Gureya. Naruto cried as he struggled to get out of Kabuto's grasp. Naruto swung his leg back and kicked him in the crotch, causing him to release his hold on Naruto's neck. Everything seemed to go into slow motion, Sasuke's hand, as it got ready to plow into Jiraiya, Naruto's running, and many words played through his head. Do you have a special someone? My body just moved I had no time to think. Everyone stood there silently, no one had made a move for a while. It had happened so fast, all the Anbu and missing Nin had stopped to see the commotion. Horrified faces were plastered on everyone's faces, except for Sasuke, his shocked face was now replaced with a smirk, if it was possible it looked even crueler than it once was. Naruto's hands were firmly placed on Sasuke's lower arm, Sasuke's hand was driven through his body, his fingers twitched, as the cold air touched his blood-covered hands. Jirei was lost for words, Naruto had taken the shot that was meant to be his death not Naruto's. Orochimaru returned his hand to himself, ripping it out of Naruto's body. Orochimaru took a good look at Sasuke's hand that was covered with his best friend's blood. Naruto stumbled backwards gently falling into Jiraiya's arms, he looked up to Jiraiya's horrified face. Naruto just had a soft smile playing on his lips, but it soon turned into a large grin. You okay? He coughed up vast amounts of blood, he still had a grin on his face, masking his pain. Naruto, you baka. Jiraiya couldn't understand the situation. Naruto's grin was replaced with a soft but sweet smile, his eyes were half-lidded well. Jiraiya laid Naruto atop the snakehead, Naruto struggled into a slight sitting position, although his face still remained the same look it was moments ago if I'm an idiot, to save those I love most. Naruto broke into a stupid grin then I'm the most idiotic person in the world he continued to cough blood up, his throat burned, and his grin was replaced with a sore expression. Naruto Sasuke whispered he reached his hand forward to touch the wilted blonde. No. Orochimaru took back control of Sasuke's body, causing him to fall over. Dead. Out Sasuke's began to tug at his hair, scrunching his eyes in pain now. Then no. Orochimaru screeched back at him. All they could do was watch as Sasuke fought with himself, nearly pulling his hair out in the process. Everyone still watched the commotion from below the large snake, they could hear Orochimaru's and Sasuke's voices fighting with each other. Ano Sakura whimpered to the Hokage, who turned to look at her what's going on up there, Hokage-sama. Sasuke's getting his body back Tsunade replied flatly, but Sakura noticed relief in her tone. Really? Sakura beamed as Tsunade nodded. Ah no one steals Sasuke's body and gets away with it. Inner Sakura squealed in delight. Gureya and Naruto watched in awe as Sasuke's face kept turning from smirks to frowns. You. Can't win Orochimaru whispered. I already have Sasuke smirked as Orochimaru was relinquished from his body. You'll pay for that, Ichiha. With that Orochimaru and Kabuto had disappeared. Gureya quickly teleported them to the ground as the snake left, the nins had already began running away from the field, worried about what happened to Orochimaru or more importantly what would happen to them. Sasuke smirked as he saw the nins disperse the area, but broke his thoughts when Naruto spoke up. Welcome back, Team Naruto weakly smiled to him, tears welled up in Sasuke's eyes, but he wouldn't let them fall. Come on Team remove that mask was all Naruto could whisper before losing consciousness. Then Naruto. Sasuke stuttered crouching, down to Naruto's unconscious figure. Naruto he noticed the large hole just below his ribs, they looked broken. He retracted his hand, as he was about to touch Naruto's face, as if it would burn him. Naruto's words rang through his mind. Come on team remove that mask. Naruto. Sasuke began sobbing loudly into Naruto's neck, tears flew freely down his cheeks, and for once he didn't care. He didn't care about his reputation. The others beside him. His ambitions. Nothing at all blacked out, he just wanted Naruto alive and well again, to smile at him when he wouldn't give him the same treatment back. Sasuke had also fainted, the stress was too much for Sasuke to handle in one night. Tsunade had to pry off Sasuke from Naruto, he didn't want to leave him. Three days later Naruto woke up to see a surprise Tsunade ride up to his face, almost scaring the living daylights out of the poor blonde, Sakura had already left to get some sleep, the only ones left were Jiraiya, Tsunade and an unconscious Acha. Oh thank heavens above. Tsunade sighed, clasping her hands in silent prey. You really scared us, Naruto Jiraiya admitted, also sighing in relief. Naruto stayed quiet for once, Tsunade and Jiraiya worried Naruto would have already started boasting about how strong he was to not die from the Chidori, but he hadn't spoken a word since he had woken up. Naruto Tsunade couldn't finish her sentence before Naruto interrupted. Okage saw that Tsunade nearly fell off her chair when he had addressed her properly, it's not safe for me to be here. What? Tsunade choked on her own rage. Orochimaru he will be back he wants QB. I will not let she was silenced by Naruto continuing. 
If he's after the QB, he's after me and if him and Kanoha he will Naruto gulp but continued, destroy anything and everything to get the QB's power. You brat. I won't let you. When Orochimaru returns we will be ready. Tsunade shouted, Naruto shook his head. I will do anything. To protect my friends and everyone in this village Tsunade opened her mouth to protest, but her mouth clicked shut. Naruto are you sure? Jiraiya said, his voice filled with worry. I am Naruto walked over to Sasuke, a limp added to his step. I'm sorry Sasuke Naruto whispered brushing back a few of Sasuke's bangs. Naruto grabbed a mask that was placed on a table beside Sasuke, he pulled it up so it covered the lower half of his face, covering his whisker scars. But by and with that it was they both saw the last of Naruto. Sasuke had avoided making any conversation with Naruto in case he hit a sore spot, obviously he wanted to know why he had left or why he had faked his death, questions were practically screaming at the Achiha prodigy to be asked and answered with no buts. Unfortunately Sasuke was not that type to start booming out questions and wanting no ifs or buts about it, Naruto was shuffling behind the black-haired ninja, just gazing down at his very interesting feet, not daring to speak out of term to the man. Sasuke was starting to get a twitch as questions were filling his head and almost clouding his vision or sense of direction, he would have walked idly by his house, kind of hard to miss, and continued down the street if Naruto hadn't asked him if that was his house they had just passed. Sasuke mentally kicked himself for acting so idiotic and brushed past Naruto without even an apology for being so blind. Sasuke quickly opened up his door, stepping to one side to let Naruto inside before himself. They both walked out of their shoes and entered Sasuke's kitchen, Naruto sat himself down on a chair parked at the bench and let out a soft sigh, Sasuke didn't know whether it was from depression or glad that the whole walk was over. Sasuke guessed that it was a little of both. Hungry? Sasuke questioned rummaging through his cupboards in search of something edible. Yep Naruto said with a grin from behind his mask. You can take that mask off dope and what do you want to eat? Sasuke smirked, he could practically hear Naruto's pout. Naruto stopped pouting and started to pull down the mask that covered the lower half of his face, he hastily placed it in one of his many pockets located on his pants, Sasuke didn't get a good look at his face before, but he was surprised on how much he had grown up and how much more mature he looked. Naruto now had a very well-defined jawline, his whiskers had gotten slightly thicker and longer, his lips looked so soft yet untouchable. Sasuke licked his dry lips and continued search of food, before Naruto answered his question come on team, you know I want Raymon more than anything Sasuke almost smiled at the comment, almost. HN. I know Sasuke smirked pulling out a box of instant Raymon, he walked over to the bench and started to boil the water as he placed down the box of Raymon. So tell me Naruto started, grabbing Sasuke's attention how is everyone? He wasn't sure if he wanted to hear the answer, but he let himself anyway. Sasuke stayed silent for a while contemplating his answer, while thinking over his answer, he had placed the Raymond in front of Naruto, who was now waiting an extra three minutes, finally Sasuke answered. Well, Sakura is now a medical nin Sasuke started, Naruto just smiled after hearing the news. I knew she would be Naruto mumbled more to himself than Sasuke. Sasuke nodded and continued, and most of us have become Anbu Naruto smiled again. That reminds me Naruto slurped up his noodles and looked at Sasuke with a grin on his face what's with your mask? What's wrong with it? Sasuke raised an elegant black eyebrow at the blonde bimbo. Well it's a fox kind of weird for you Naruto said, the grin still plastered on his face. It's because Sasuke swallowed hard and continued, it reminded me of you. Naruto raised an eyebrow at him why would you want to be reminded of me? Because Sasuke tore his gaze from Naruto and looked at something off to the side of Naruto I don't know I just do. Naruto couldn't help but smile at the comment, he liked how Sasuke was so bold with his words. Naruto always had wanted to be like him, but before he had faked his death, he had really learned how complicated and complex Sasuke's life was. Living with the grief and burden of you family being killed by your brother, of course Naruto had no family, but he never had one, so he never knew what it was like to lose one. Sasuke could tell Naruto was in deep thought, so he didn't disturb the blonde shinobi. Sasuke removed the empty and nearly licked clean bowl from in front of him and placed it in the sink, not soon after the clank of the bowl hitting the metal surface in the sink, Naruto had shaken off his trance and was now apologizing over and over again for being so dumb to space off like that. Sasuke grabbed a chair besides Naruto and sat beside him on an angle, they both decided it was question and answer time for Naruto and Sasuke. They started to exchange information about what has happened during Naruto's untimely departure, laughs and growls were going off every few sentences spoke. Yes, Naruto was truly home again. So Sakura actually missed me. Naruto felt dumbfounded when Sasuke had announced that to him. Sasuke nodded yeah, after your death she wouldn't stop crying it was really annoying Sasuke cringed, he could still hear that whiny high-pitched cry of hers and her loud snorts. Ha. 
I would have loved to see that Naruto chuckled, seven years ago I mean. So you don't? Sasuke asked, a little confused. Nah, my love for her went when I went Naruto's side, but with a smile. Sasuke simply nodded to the answer from Naruto, they sat there in silence for at least four minutes before Naruto started another conversation, and you? Um? Sasuke didn't understand the question. And you Naruto's eye were half-lidded, he looked like he was about to fall asleep missed me. Right. Sasuke was dumbfounded, he really wanted to know if Sasuke was sad about him going. Sasuke couldn't understand why he wanted to know, but it had a strange effect on him, like he wanted Naruto to feel happy that he had missed him of course I missed you, dope, Sasuke stated coolly. Naruto just flashed him the sweetest smile only seen in fairy tales, and nodded thanks Sasuke you don't know how much that means to me. That smile made Sasuke's stomach do black flips, he wasn't sure why, but he adored the way Naruto would give him various smiles, but only to him, he remembered when he first felt jealousy Naruto had smiled sweetly towards Gara, who happily returned his smile Sasuke, wasn't sure what the feeling he got was back then, but now he realizes he was jealous. After their long conversation it was 9.23pm Naruto was feeling sleepy after his long, wild and unexpected day, and had decided to wash up and head in for the day. Sasuke had guided Naruto to the bathroom and handed him some of his clothing to sleep in, which consisted of a navy blue Ichiha shirt and black boxers. Naruto had a long cold shower to shake off his drowsiness. Naruto apologized towards Sasuke for not being able to stay up and keep him company, but Sasuke reassured everything was fine and that he should get his rest. Once again Sasuke had shown Naruto to one of his many guest rooms, it was right beside Sasuke's bedroom. His room was about as big as Sasuke's and had the same decor in the rooms, although all the room looked quite similar. That night Sasuke Naruto gave Sasuke a warm smile who happily returned his smile. The yeah, night, Dobe Sasuke said exiting the room, Naruto ignored the insult and waved gently even after the door had closed. Naruto groaned and flopped down on the bed, he snuggled his face closer into the soft pillow under his face and sighed happily, I wonder how long it's been since I last slept on a bed. Two three weeks. Naruto spoke to himself, his face still deep in the pillow. Naruto lazily moved towards the light switch flipping it off and pulling off the covers before hopping underneath them and smiling himself to sleep, all his worries and regrets melted away that evening, while chatting with Sasuke, he felt like he truly belonged somewhere in this world. Morning. Naruto groaned as he sat up in the soft bed below himself, he ran a tanned hand through his soft blonde locks, letting his bangs fold down randomly over his face. Naruto's hair had grown longer as he got older he had also gotten stronger, although he didn't look it, not many muscles were visible from beneath his shirt, but everyone knew he was stronger than he used to be. Naruto stretched his arms upwards and ruffled his hair, he flipped his legs over the side of the bed and began trudging towards the door. Naruto rubbed his sleep eyes once he was in the hallway and continued downstairs towards the kitchen, Sasuke was already up, but not awake, he looked like he was ready to kill anyone who spoke out of term. Unfortunately Naruto did so. Not a morning person, eh? Naruto chuckled at the pathetic attempt at a glare from Sasuke, needless to say he didn't look very intimidating. Sasuke just snorted and slurped down his coffee that was conveniently placed beside him on the bench, Naruto plopped down in his previous chair from last night and let out a loud sigh, Sasuke had made a coffee for him already and it was cooling gently on the bench. Naruto took a large gulp of his coffee and set it back down on the bench, Sasuke was casually staring off into space until a knock at the door and squealing high-pitched voices were sounded. Naruto almost flipped when their laughter rang through his ears, and who was at the door? None other than Ino and Sakura, Naruto suspected their unconditional love for Sasuke hadn't passed. After hearing the commotion outside that is. Sasuke-kun. They pronounced each syllable of Sasuke's name with delight. They still like you? Naruto asked, a little sadness tweaking his words. No Sasuke replied, flatly. Naruto raised his eyebrows you serious. Then who do they like? Sasuke wasn't hesitant to answer, Sakura is with Lee, and Ino is with Shikamaru, sorry about Ino and Shikamaru, it's the only guy I like with her. Naruto nearly choked on his coffee fuzzy eyebrows. And that lazy bastard. Wow. Sasuke smirked at Naruto's approach to the situation, he finally realized that Ino and Sakura were still pounding on the door and were now shouting random threats toward Sasuke about his door and his life. Sasuke hastily opened the door to see a fuming pink-haired girl and a growling blonde girl, to say the least Sasuke was nervous on what they would to him. Sasuke Ino started, cracking her knuckles for effect. Yeah? Sasuke asked, trying to hide his slight fear. Ahehe <laughs> Ino chuckled evilly under her breath. While Sasuke was busy trying to keep Ino from attacking him, Sakura had slipped past Sasuke and was now walking aimlessly around his house. She sat down on a chair in a random room, she sighed, wondering why they were there again. 
Sakura soon got bored and went to fetch Ino when she spotted a figure sitting on a chair in the kitchen, not wanting to be rude, although she was curious she went to greet the other man inside the house. Hello, have we met? I'm Sakura by the way she said happily to Naruto. Naruto dared not to say a word in cause she noticed his voice, his hands were crossed on the bench with his face buried in them, his whiskers weren't visible from Sakura's position, so he hoped that she wouldn't step closer. Unfortunately, she did. Don't be shy, I just want to be friends she said, walking closer to blonde what's your naw. She stopped with her mouth agape, she had noticed the whisker-like scars on his cheek and was lost for words. She was starting to twitch slightly and uttered incoherent words to Naruto. Na 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 ga baz ah Sakura continued to utter those words over and over again, Naruto knew she had figured out who he was, so he didn't bother to hide his scars anymore. Sakura he spoke softly not wanting to startle the girl, bad for him it did. Sakura let out a high-pitched scream before falling backwards, with Naruto agility, he quickly caught her before she hit the ground, he placed her gently on the ground before Ino and Sasuke came rushing in. Sakura what's Ino's eyes widened when she saw Naruto hovering over Sakura, his bangs covered his eyes, but unfortunately not his scars. Na na Naruto. Was all she could manage to say. Naruto just sighed and nodded, Ino let out a high-pitched scream almost identical to Sakura's and fell backwards as well, Sasuke caught her and laid her back down on the floor as well, Sasuke sighed and looked at the two unconscious girls, and then at Naruto. Do you think we should tell them the truth? Sasuke asked, cautiously. Naruto hesitantly nodded and bit his bottom lip as he thought of the situation. Once these two wake up we'll explain everything Sasuke sighed and dragged Ino over to a couch and placed her on it softly, while well, Naruto did the same with Sakura on a couch opposite to the one Ino was placed on. Hey Naruto. Sasuke smirked at the idea he had gotten. Hmm. Naruto mumbled, stretching his arms outwards. Wanna spar? Naruto didn't know why he agreed to it, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but now he was defiantly starting to reconsider his answer. Sasuke had asked him to join him in a sparring session, of course Naruto still had his childish ways and eagerly accepted the challenge, at the time he didn't realize he had to go outside and to their old training grounds to spar with him, this information was new to him when Sasuke had informed him later of this. Naruto had borrowed some of Sasuke's clothes again, which was a pair of black shorts and navy blue Ichiha shirt, Naruto knew that people would recognize him for his whiskers were still clearly marked upon his tanned face. So he had made the decision to wear his mask outside to keep his whiskers hidden, Sasuke tried to object, but Naruto obviously would listen and was already out the door by the time Sasuke was only halfway through his rant about the mask. Sasuke didn't understand why Naruto didn't want people to recognize him, was it because he had faked his death all these years? Or maybe he just thought he hadn't belonged during his life in Konoha, why would he belong now? Sasuke pushed all those thoughts aside when he noticed a big blue orb staring deep into his cold black ones, Sasuke's eyes widened a little scared he would have eagerly pushed him away and began yelling at him, but instead he narrowed his eyes and scowled at the blonde. Naruto couldn't help but laugh at Sasuke's reactions, Sasuke's scowl deepened before he rudely pushed past Naruto and continued his way to the training grounds. Asser's eyes took glances at the strange blonde-haired man, not many had recognized him without his scars being visible. No one was throwing insults at him as he walked down the street, still not far behind the Ichiha prodigy, it was quite strange to see people Naruto didn't recognize or no smile towards him in a silent attempt to greet him. Naruto happily smiled back at them, not sure how to react to the situation. Sasuke noticed Naruto looked a little uneasy as he smiled towards the villagers, Sasuke turned back and hollered out to the blonde shinobi. Hey hurry up, dead last Naruto growled, but hurried up his pace, not much later Sasuke and Naruto had finally reached the training grounds Naruto smiled, it was just how he had left it. Sasuke glanced at Naruto and smirked, he knew he was reminiscing about the times they all shared their being Team 7 Sasuke took a quick stretch before getting into a good fighting stance, as did Naruto. They both just stood there for a while wanting each other to attack, a cool breeze had picked up and blew their hair carelessly to the side of their faces before it died down. Neither moved for a while waiting for one another to charge, Naruto finally spoke up us Sasuke ladies first Naruto smirked as Sasuke let out an animalistic growl and charged. Sasuke threw a punch at Naruto, which he gracefully caught and threw his own punch aimed at Sasuke's stomach, Sasuke gasped loudly when the force came in contact with his stomach, Sasuke fell to the ground and threw his legs around in an attempt to knock Naruto off his feet. Naruto fell backwards onto his backside with a slight oof escaping his lips, Naruto quickly rubbed his sore backside before jumping to his feet and performing some hand seals. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto hollered, and at least 20 identical copies of Naruto appeared, Sasuke could only smirk watching all the copies get ready to charge at him. Just like old times Sasuke whispered to himself. 
They all charged at Sasuke their fists ready to throw punches at him, Sasuke quickly performed some hand seals and called out Katen, no jutsu Sasuke took a deep breath before exhaling fireballs aimed at the many clones, they all flew backwards from the force, some of them burning before they popped away. Individually they all left except one the real Naruto, he was clutching to his chest that had smoke emitting from it. He slowly wobbled to his feet before he choked out a few words. F fuck team your jutsu come a long way Naruto removed his head to reveal some minor burns, marking his chest but, so have I. Naruto charged for Sasuke, Sasuke was taken slightly back from the look in his eyes bloodlust Naruto's eyes were now hellish red, and his pupils were more slit. The fire jutsu must have awoken the QB Sasuke though before claws started to dig into the flesh on his back, it felt completely unnatural, as the claws seeped under his skin. Sasuke cringed, Naruto had his legs wrapped around Sasuke's waist to keep him in place, his head was lying on his shoulder, and his arms were wrapped around his shoulders, as his claws were still digging into his back. If you were just walking past you would thinking they were hugging one another, if you didn't see the blood that is Sasuke could feel the back of his shirt become soggy, with the blood oozing from his deep gashes marked on his back, Naruto could only smirk before he sunk his sharp canines into Sasuke's shoulder. Sasuke sharply inhaled his breath with clenched teeth, Sasuke felt tears well up in his eyes from the pain, Naruto just sunk his teeth deeper into his shoulder, liking the agonizing cries and pleas. Naruto Sasuke placed his hand atop Naruto's head, that's enough stop. Naruto stopped biting into Sasuke's shoulder and looked down at the large and bleeding bite mark Sasuke Naruto's eyes turned back to their normal angelic blue color, and his fangs and claws turned back to normal as well, Naruto gasped at the eight large gashes on his back, fortunately they were not very deep, so he would not need stitches, nor would they leave a scar. Sasuke I'm. I'm so sorry it's just the fire jutsu was Naruto stopped apologizing, he knew he couldn't apologize his way out of this situation. It's fine, just help me get home Sasuke mumbled into his hand, Naruto threw his arm around his shoulder and helped him walk home. Naruto pulled his mask back over his face with his free hand, before people began to notice his whisker-like scars, Sasuke winced slightly as the blood ran down his back. People walking by stopped to stare and even whisper about the Ichiha's condition, Sasuke sent glares their way startling the villagers and making them turn their attention toward something else, like the fact the great Ichiha is actually getting help to walk back. Naruto felt uneasy when all eyes landed on him, but continued to help Sasuke walk to his house, Sasuke steadily unlocked his door and entered the house not bothering to take off his shoes. Naruto took off his shoes and placed them by the door, with a quick glance at the two unconscious girls he went to follow Sasuke to give him help. He pulled down his mask so it was hanging around his neck. Naruto quietly knocked on Sasuke's bedroom door, he heard a muffled come in, so he entered. The room was dark, barely being lit by the sun peering in the closed curtains. Sasuke was sitting on his bed in a crouched over position, Naruto slowly approached the dark figure and cleared his throat before speaking. I'm really sorry Sasuke was all Naruto could think to say. It's okay really, Sasuke muttered, his eyes meeting soft blue ones. Um if you want I could help you clean your wounds, Naruto said, nervously. Sasuke was about to protest, but the thought finally crossed his mind, his wounds were on his back and in a difficult position to clean and treat, so he agreed that Naruto could help him treat his wounds. Sasuke led Naruto into the bathroom and sat down on a conveniently placed stool in the bathroom, Sasuke took off his shirt, and Naruto cringed, how could he have done so much damage to someone he cares so much about Naruto grabbed a wet cloth and began dab the open wounds and washing away the dry blood that stained his skin. Naruto placed the slightly blood-stained cloth beside him and grabbed a bottle of antiseptic before dabbing it on Sasuke's wounds, Naruto did the same with a bite mark and wrapped Sasuke's torso and right shoulder so his wounds would heal faster. Sasuke mumbled a thanks under his breath before he stood up, Sasuke glanced back at Naruto who was still sitting on the floor, his bangs covered his eyes, so Sasuke couldn't understand what was feeling. You'd think after years being the QB's vessel I shoulder be able to control it Naruto tried to laugh the situation off, but was failing terribly at it. Now I know why Akatsuki wants its power, so much Sasuke could only stare at Naruto, I'm dangerous really dangerous. Sasuke sucked in everything Naruto had said to him it worried him. Something must have happened while Naruto was gone something truly bad Sasuke thought as he continued to stare at Naruto. It's not safe for me to be here Naruto buried his face into his hands, Akatsuki will stop at nothing to get the QB. Sasuke hesitantly rubbed the blonde's back as a soothing gesture, Naruto soon softened up to the touch after getting tense with the foreign touch of Sasuke. After Naruto had quieted down, Sasuke pulled back his hand and let it drop limply beside him, Sasuke went and pulled a fresh top over his head and went downstairs to wake Sakura and Ino up. 
Garrido got up and pulled his mask back over his face, before followed Sasuke downstairs to greet the girls, Sasuke had already woken them up, and they were now raiding Sasuke for answers to what they had seen earlier. Sakura and Ino turned around as they felt the presence of another person, their eyes widened in shock, Ino was getting ready to faint, while Sakura was absent-mindedly walking closer to Naruto and whispering his name under her breath. Naruto Sakura seemed to be in some sort of trance, her hands extended out and touched his mask and his warm face, she chewed her bottom lip before pulling down Naruto's mask to see the three marks that still were visible on his cheeks. Naruto her voice sounded angry but tweaking with sadness, she raised her fists to whack Naruto over and over again Naruto didn't stop her, he knew it would be good for her to release her angry physically before talking this over. Sakura's hands just pounded on his chest, not inflicting any pain to the blonde at all, why Naruto? Why, why, why? Sakura had now begun crying into the blonde's shoulder, why did you leave Naruto why? Naruto could only stroke her hair in a comforting manner, Sakura's hand got more limp until it was just a soft baby touch on his chest. Naruto Ino had finally spoken up why did you do it? Naruto stayed quiet for a while, so Ino asked again well. Her voice sounded impatient, Sakura had quieted down, so she could also hear Naruto's reply, so now she was just making soft sniffling noises. Naruto's eyes were fixed at his feet, he finally decided after a good two to three minutes how to explain it to the two girls. It was to save Kanoha Naruto said his eyes not leaving his feet. From what? Sakura said, her head still laying on Naruto's chest. A Akatsuki Naruto looked off to the side avoiding everyone's gaze. That makes no sense. Sakura was unable to hold her rage in anymore, she pushed herself away from Naruto and was now staring at her feet, clenching and unclenching her fists in rage, we can protect ourselves from Akatsuki and Orochimaru. Besides Orochimaru is dead that's half the threat gone. No he's not Naruto said, his gaze still off to the side he used someone else's body most likely Kabuto or some sound nin. W what Sakura and Ino stuttered in unison B but we saw he left Sasuke and he died. Like I said he's using someone else's body believe me I know Naruto spoke in a reassuring tone. All this was happening so fast, Sakura's and Ino's worlds were spinning out of control. First they saw a person they knew was dead for many years and now they realized that Orochimaru wasn't dead and was now planning to attack Konoha again. They felt like their world was turned upside down and in a whirlpool, they weren't quite sure what to think or to say at a moment like this they thought and hoped that this moment would never come into their lives. I think Ino started, grabbing everyone's attention I think Sakura, and I need time to think about all that you've said. Naruto nodded but promise you won't tell anyone in here, I'd rather tell them in my own time understanding Naruto Ino and Sakura nodded. Well we'll be leaving now Sakura looked over at Ino who nodded and they walked out the door and left the Ichiha residence. Naruto looked over towards Sasuke, who was sitting on the sofa in a crouched over position and staring at the floor, much like when Naruto had met him in his room. Naruto sat down beside Sasuke waiting for him to speak or move, they sat there in silence for a good long time, because Naruto knew Sasuke needed time for his answer to the girls to sink into him as well. Sasuke began fidgeting with the hem of his shirt, Naruto figured this was going nowhere so he decided to talk. As so on Naruto stammered, he couldn't think of anything to say, so he left it at that. When are you going to tell the others? Sasuke questioned Naruto. You are well Naruto began, Sasuke finally looked him in the eyes I think when I feel it's the right time, then I'll tell them. But Sasuke ran a hand through his raven locks and sighed, he looked up at the clock, the time read 2.21. Boy you bastard. I'm hungry. Naruto whined holding his growling stomach. H.N. Dobe Sasuke got up and walked to the kitchen, and he made Naruto and himself a belated lunch. Night. Naruto and Sasuke had pretty much avoided each other for the rest of the day, Sasuke had important things to attend to, so he had left Naruto in his house alone Naruto soon got bored of thinking over things in his mind, so he went to watch the Ichiha's TV. Naruto was aimlessly flipping through channels until he had found something he liked, but changed it at least 5 minutes after he had began watching it, Naruto had fallen asleep on the sofa, the remote was still in his grasp. Sasuke had come home at 10.13 to find Naruto sleeping peacefully on his sofa, all he could do was smirk at the sight. Sasuke picked up Naruto, and to his surprise Naruto was oddly light for his age. Must have something to do with faking his death Sasuke shrugged it off, but he would defiantly be questioning Naruto later about it. Sasuke placed Naruto on his bed, not Sasuke's bed you pervs, and tucked his snoozing blonde in. Sakura thought Naruto looked innocent as he watched him sleep, he no longer looked like the tired, hungry, sad and misunderstood blonde Sasuke first saw him as, he looked sweet and innocent like he hadn't a care in the world just like when Sasuke first met Naruto. Sasuke soon shook off all those feelings and emotions and headed in for the night himself, he carelessly threw his clothes to his side and slipped down under his covers. 
He turned to one side to look at the large moon gazing in his windows. Sasuke let a soft smile play upon his lips before he fell into a deep slumber. Sasuke's eyes fluttered open as the harsh sunlight seeped through his curtains, Sasuke pulled the covers to the one side and swung his legs over the edge of his bed, he rubbed his eyes in a very unachia manner and gave a small yawn. Sasuke grabbed out a pair of white shorts and a navy achiha shirt, Sasuke ruffled his hair, making it at least look slightly decent in the presence of Naruto Sasuke had a small flashback of when he was carrying the sleeping lug up the stairs, he remembered how light Naruto felt, yes today he would ask Naruto about it not like he was curious or anything. Sasuke shuffled out of his room with a look on his face that spelled death Sasuke was not a morning person, he walked down the hall, but stopped in front of Naruto's room, Sasuke cringed to hear a loud snore erupted from behind the closed door, Sasuke marched into Naruto's room, not noticing it had gone quiet. Sasuke was surprised to see him sleeping peacefully with no snoring, but another snore erupted, Sasuke sighed Naruto could really be random at times, Naruto snored again, but this time it was a little softer. HN Sasuke's hand paused before he could grasp the door handle, a small whimper emitted from the blonde's mouth. Hmm? Sasuke mumbled, walking over to Naruto kneeling beside the low bed. Nightmare Sasuke mumbled to himself, he was absent-mindedly soothing the young man by stroking his hair. Naruto's eyes were twitching in fear, the nightmare was starting to get to him he broke out in a cold sweat of fear, Sasuke was still stroking him hair, not really caring about his pride or the fact it was his best friend and rival's hair that he was stroking, he just felt like it was the right thing to do without making it look lovingly. Nightmare Mode. Demon someone with their face in the shadows kicked a younger Naruto in the stomach before backing away into the shadows. Monster. A little girl about his age kicked his shin and laughed at him with her friends before fading away into the darkness. Naruto cringed and held his grazed shins closer to his bruised body, he wanted to cry, but the tears wouldn't fall, no matter how hard he was trying to get some sympathy from the cruel villagers. Naruto was now at least 12-13 years of age. Help it hurts Naruto cried out softly, he voice wouldn't allow him to go any higher in his state. He was figures emerge from the darkness, they represented as so-called friends, they remembered how they had bad-mouthed him and ridiculed him for fun and had turned their backs on him many times, even though sometimes he was with them, were okay nothing significant had really come out of the whole friendship with them. All the figures faded into black, they all had glares and looks of scorn, crossing their previous expressionless faces. Please Naruto whimpered before curling into a little ball, the pain had grown much worse than before. Loser another voice had appeared, it seemed deep and evil and serious. Naruto looked up to see Onyx's eyes they were cold and harsh, as they were glaring him down, you're a loser, you know that. Sasuke hissed at him and turned around, his back facing Naruto. You'll always be dead last, no matter how hard you try Sasuke soon became blurred, Naruto scrunched his eyes in order to make the vision look less blurred. When Naruto reopened his eyes he gasped to see a horrific sight, it was defiantly Orochimaru Orochimaru was holding Sasuke's cold, lifeless body in his hands, a look of fear and terror was clearly marked on Sasuke's pale face, blood was mixing with Sasuke's unshed tears, before dripping down his face and into a small puddle on the floor. No Naruto whispered, Orochimaru just smirked. No. Naruto screamed out, Orochimaru let out a beastly laugh at Naruto he reached forward for Naruto and. Ah. Naruto panted out as he jolted up, Sasuke had removed his hand on reflex when Naruto had moved. Nightmare. Sasuke simply asked, looking away from Naruto and over towards the door. Why yeah Naruto panted out, wiping off the cold sweat off his forehead. Wanna talk about it? Sasuke asked simply again still staring at the very interesting door. Iwa Naruto stuttered, the image of Sasuke just kept running through his mind no I don't am fine. HN okay then Sasuke said standing up and heading for the door again, but Naruto hadn't budged. Come on Sasuke whined, he didn't really want it to turn into a protest with that blonde. Naruto hesitated to move but answered anyway, yeah sure, and I leave and make it Naruto ran a hand through his hair, letting a short lone bang fulling over his forehead. Huh? You cook? Sasuke choked out, he was defiantly surprised with this new information. Well duh. Sasuke and you're supposed to be the smart one Naruto spoke very childishly like he was still 12, Sasuke just rolled his eyes and smirked. How did you learn? Sasuke asked, walking back and talking a seat on the end of Naruto's bed. Here and there one of my jobs while I was Naruto stopped, Sasuke was confused about why he stopped all of a sudden, but he soon continued, gone was being a chef, you know. Naruto seemed a little disorientated after his small break, Sasuke just gave a nod not wanting to make the situation any worse than it seemed to have gotten, Naruto got up and left the room with Sasuke not too far behind. You sit down I'll make the pancakes, Naruto said as he entered a very clean kitchen. Pancakes? Sasuke raised his eyebrows. What? Never had pancakes. Naruto joked, Sasuke glared harshly. 
Of course I meant, you know how to cook them. Sasuke sneered, now Naruto was returning his glare intensely. Well it's so simple even you could make them Naruto couldn't help but smirk at the pathetic attempt at a death glare, while Sasuke was particularly shocked at his comeback. Sasuke just growled as Naruto let out a hearty laugh at him, Naruto walked into the kitchen and grabbed out bowls and the many ingredients. Sasuke was still waiting patiently in the room, he let his index finger tap the table's surface out of boredom. Naruto returned six minutes later with a pile of golden brown pancakes on a large plate, Naruto placed them down in front of him, and strangely Sasuke had looked over at Naruto expectantly. What? No honey. Sasuke said sarcastically. Naruto couldn't help but smile, Sasuke had defiantly changed over the many years he noticed he was a bit more open with his feelings and suggestions on things, while Naruto had been busy contemplating Sasuke had already left for the honey, returned, and was now drowning his pancakes in the sugary substance. Who would have thought the Ichiha likes honey? Naruto's words slowed down as he watched him swallow a large spoonful of honey. H.N. Sasuke practically inhaled the pancakes drowned in honey mind you. Wow Naruto said, scoffing down another pancake. What's that supposed to mean? Sasuke questioned, wiping the honey and crumbs away from his face with a napkin. Nothing nothing Naruto said with a small and innocent smile playing on his lips. H.N. Sasuke mumbled, he gathered up the dishes and placed them in the sink he would worry about it later. Naruto Sasuke mumbled, Naruto perked up. Yeah. Naruto leaned back on his seat and placed his arms over the back of it. I'm just wondering because you worked as a chef I mean us Sasuke was getting muddled up, he didn't want to seem too worried about it, but didn't know how to say it unfortunately he just blurted it out thoughtlessly why are you so thin. Sasuke clamped his hands over his mouth he had defiantly come on too strongly, Naruto was slightly taken back by the question, but decided to answer as correctly well I didn't start cooking until I was 18, even then I barely had enough money to buy food. Sasuke had never thought of it like that it was strange, but he accepted it, silence soon engulfed even the slightest sounds that included the birds chirping, the loud stomping, the opening of gates, the unmistakably voices. Knock. 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 Huh? Sasuke muttered, Naruto perked up, he heard the loud knock and a chattering bunch outside. Knock. 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 Boy. It should have opened up. The voice was unmistakably Kiba's. Hey kiba -kun, of course the stuttering soft voice was obviously sweet Hinata. This is so troublesome Shikamaru said his trademark words, I don't believe he's here, Ino. He is. Right Sakura. Ino yelled. Right. Sakura agreed. Knock. 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 Sasuke Kuun open up. Sakura and Ino yelled in unison. Knock. 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 The mini feud outside his door was beginning to get annoying, so Sasuke had begun to turn the knob. Fuck. Naruto cursed under his breath, hiding his face in his hands. Wasasuke stammered as he was pushed back by the angry mob behind the door. Where is he Ichiha? Kiba growled, grabbing him by his collar. What the fuck are you talking about? Sasuke yelled, clipping Kiba's chin with his fist, granting him and his collar freedom. There Kiba. Ino declared pointing over to Naruto, his bangs were covering his eyes. Naruto they were all lost for words, Sakura looked uneasy about how Ino had blabbed about him being there, Hinata had tears welling in her wide eyes, Kiba and Shikamaru were just standing there mouth agape. Why? Did you leave us you idiot Kiba exploded at Naruto who hadn't seemed affected. Why you're asking me why? Naruto started off with an intense glare set at Kiba. Kiba stayed silent so Naruto decided to continue, it's because of you. I did this so you all of you everyone. Would be safe from Akatsuki and wouldn't have to suffer another attack. Naruto yelled at Kiba's face who was standing perfectly still, Hinata was now bowling her eyes out. And the least you could have done was go to my fake funeral Naruto turned his gaze away to the side and was looking down at the carpet. Naruto-kun Hinata walked forward and reached out to plant a hand on his shoulder, but Naruto rudely walked away from it. I'm going to see Hokage. And with that Naruto stormed out the door and was already halfway to the Hokage's office. Um Sakura stuttered nervously. This is all my fault if I didn't give in to gossiping then Ino stammered, she was on the verge of a massive breakdown. Everyone was affected by how Naruto had given them all the cold shoulder suddenly, even Sasuke was worried Naruto had seemed unaffected by his past when he had met him, or when he was with him, why did he start now? I better go see the dope now out of my house, Sasuke began pushing all the intruders out the door, ignoring the many protests. Now Sasuke was very very curious about Naruto. Sasuke was now on his way to the Hokage's office of course he had ran back into his house and started changing desperately into his Anbu outfit and grabbed his mask before bounding off to the Hokage's office again. Sasuke was now walking at a very fast pace as he pushed past random strangers and fangirls who were trying to latch onto him, his pace began to slow down as he thought over how to question Naruto on how he had acted back at his house. 
Okay um Naruto why did you err? this is harder than I thought Sasuke was deep in thought and was almost starting up a fight with his inner self, haven't we all done that before? Uh Naruto no Naruto. No Naru kun okay defiantly not that Sasuke growled out loud in anger. God damn it. Sasuke stopped and yelled out loud, clutching his head in frustration. Why is this so hard? Sasuke yelled to himself, banging his head on a wall. Wait back up a bit here wall. Sasuke lifted his head to notice he had been in such deep thought he didn't realize he was now outside the Hokage's door and banging his head loudly on the wall beside it, to say the least Sasuke almost shitted himself to see he was already there. He turned on his heel and began to walk off again, he needed more time to get the best explanation from Naruto without outrushing him or frightening him away. What? A scream emitted from behind the Hokage's door, Sasuke swiftly turned around and planted his ear on the door to hear the conversation. Lower the decibels Brad Hokage sneered, removing her hands from her ears. But what do you mean, we have six days tops before Akatsuki arrives? Naruto yelled again but a little softer. Many have informed me of this information, so it's no joke Tsunade sighed, rubbing her temples. We'll have to prepare many for the attack Naruto I want you to help also Tsunade ordered, Naruto opened his mouth to protest, but Tsunade butted in. No buts brat. We need your strength to help us, yes we are strong, but we know you've almost defeated Orochimaru before I'm sure you can do it now, Naruto. Tsunade spoke with much authority, she had used Naruto's name to state she was serious. Why yes Hokage Naruto hesitantly agreed and nodded. Knock. Knock. A soft knock was sounded, Naruto and the Hokage both looked towards the door before Tsunade addressed for them to enter, Sasuke opened the door, not making eye contact with anyone he closed the door behind him slowly, Tsunade knew it had to do something with Naruto and not herself. Yes, Sasuke. The Hokage nodded in the dark-haired shinobi's direction. Hokage-sama I wish to speak with Naruto Sasuke still hadn't lifted his head alone. Yes, I understand she said and shooed the two boys out of her office. Naruto crossed his arms and turned his back to Sasuke, Sasuke eventually did the same thing, except he wouldn't bother to cross his arms, a thick silence stopped even the littlest of sounds that were around the two shinobi, for all Sasuke knew Naruto could have fallen asleep standing up. Okay, maybe not. Naruto unfolded his arms and began to walk away from Sasuke, Sasuke heard the clacking of his shoes and turned around are you just going to leave and act like it never happened? Well I'll tell you now it did happen and you can't walk away from it. Naruto stopped walking and turned his head around, so he was only half looking at him you would know, wouldn't you? What? Sasuke was slightly taken back by the tone of his voice, it was dark and unusual. You always acted like that, and now that I'm doing it, it's suddenly bad. What makes you so special? Naruto hissed. Naruto Sasuke growled deeply under his breath. Sasuke ran forward and pushed Naruto's back into the wall behind him, he held Naruto close by gripping onto his shirt collar. Naruto wouldn't look at him, Sasuke emitted a loud growl and whacked Naruto up against the wall. Look at me Naruto. Sasuke ordered, but Naruto didn't turn to face him. Bloody hell. Look at me. He whacked Naruto up against the wall again, this time earning a growl from the blonde. Naruto abruptly turned his head and glared intensely at Sasuke happy now. No Sasuke admitted his grip getting looser. Well I knew that was coming. Naruto sneered turning his head away from Sasuke again. Sasuke grip tightened I won't let you leave until you explain your attitude towards the others. Why should I? Naruto growled, clawing at Sasuke's wrists let go. No. Sasuke said, narrowing his eyes at Naruto. Eh fine. Naruto tried to wiggle out of Sasuke grasp, but resistance was futile. I let you go after you tell me Sasuke smirked, there was no way Naruto would get away without actually hitting Sasuke. Well Naruto started and then bit his lip nervously, but still continued talking. When I heard their voices no their footsteps all the bad memories just came flooding back I couldn't help but to be angry with them, but it's not like I actually meant to get angry with them I just couldn't find out how to stop the bad memories, and the nightmare Naruto trailed off into a whisper. Nightmare? What does that have to do with anything? Sasuke asked softly. Well the dream was about all the terrible things that have happened to me, and how much you all hated and despised me especially you Naruto trailed off again, it was becoming a small habit. Me? Sasuke raised his eyebrows as Naruto nodded. Yeah I don't know why, but I guess it's because how you hated me and probably still do Naruto, could feel like he was crying on the inside, but he would never let Sasuke see him cry now and over this conversation. I I didn't hate you it just that every day you could smile and be yourself, and no one would think of you differently, but you see if I smiled, my reputation as an Achiha or Ice Prince would be shattered, but you you could smile and show your emotions I was Sasuke trailed off, he didn't really want to say it but if he did then this fight would be over with jealous. Naruto looked at him like he had two heads a jealous Achiha. This defiantly freaked out Naruto. 
Yes, Sasuke stopped holding Naruto and let his arms drop limply beside him. Oh oh Naruto cautiously chewed his bottom lip. So what's up with Akatsuki? Sasuke hesitantly asked. You oh we only have at least six days to prepare for their arrival with Orochimaru Naruto answered nervously. I see Sasuke nodded and looked over at Naruto. Let's go to Ichiraku's my treat Sasuke said, trying to lighten the mood. That's sure. Naruto said, wrapping an arm around Sasuke's neck let's go. Sasuke didn't want to he knew Naruto would make fun of him, but he did it anyway Sasuke gave Naruto a genuine smile, not a smirk no hinting of sarcasm in it, just a normal genuine smile from him, Sasuke was surprised to see him smile back. You know Sasuke, you should smile more often I like your smile, Naruto admitted a little embarrassed. Ah Sasuke turned away, what Naruto said it touched him he never thought about having a nice smile, nor did anyone ever tell him thought he guessed that I was just afraid of what people would think of it Sasuke actually, and strangely, couldn't stop smiling. Naruto removed his arm and gave Sasuke a playful punch on the shoulder come on, let's go. Sure Sasuke picked up his pace to catch up with Naruto. Naruto was humming as they walked alongside each other to the Chirakus, people walking by nearly screamed when they saw that Naruto was back, Naruto stopped humming and being cheery when he saw all the looks people were sending him. Monster a lady hissed under his breath to him, Naruto didn't let it get to him though. Naruto started up a conversation with Sasuke, there were hands gestures and laughter emitting from the two, yes, Sasuke was laughing, they soon arrived at the Chirakus, and Naruto stopped dead in his tracks when he saw who was there. Hiba, Shikamaru, Shino, Chaoji Li, Tenten, Niji, Sakura, Hinata and Ino were there, they all turned to look at him and almost spat the food right out of their mouths and onto the person serving them, even Niji was about to spit out his food, was run up and hug him like he was a desperately lonely fangirl. Naruto. They all yelled out and latched onto him, tugging from side to side with hugs, even Niji was latching onto his arm before he realized what he was doing and jumped off him. I'm so sorry Naruto. Ino cried into his arm. Me too Naruto. Sakura whined into his other arm. Yeah sorry for yelling at you Naruto Kiba said a little embarrassed. No I'm sorry guys it's my fault for getting angry Naruto admitted with a nervous smile. Weren't you dead? The people who Ino hadn't told asked in unison, Chaoji, Shino, Tenten, Li and Niji. Uh, Naruto didn't want to explain it luckily Sasuke stepped in. He'll explain it when he's ready, let's just eat Sasuke side and sat down on a chair and Naruto sat down beside him. Yeah, let's. Naruto agreed happily. Boy. Old man. Gimmaizo. Naruto said happily, the man turned around and dropped the bowl he was holding. I can't be. He stuttered, running back to get his order. Um everyone was confused by the owner's actions except Naruto, he obviously understood. They all had fun catching up with each other, Naruto was still a little cautious with all the questions he was being given, but luckily for him Sasuke was there and always was stepping in when he thought he was in a bit of a pickle and Naruto had a great time talking to each other. As did Niji and Sasuke Sakura or anyone wouldn't ever admit it out loud, but they all knew and understood that Naruto wasn't the blonde bimbo he once was he had grown into the perfect gentleman. Naruto. Naruto had obviously done something stupid, so they all yelled at him, but they did it while laughing. Well a somewhat gentleman. Him getting back to work Sasuke sighed, paying for his ramen and saying his goodbyes. He left for the Anbu. Sorry if that's not right. Hey guys me and Sakura are going shopping. Ino waved herself and Sakura off as they headed for the shops. One by one they all began to leave, Naruto left not soon after Sakura and Ino he wanted to be alone for a while, not seeing any other reason to stay most people left after he did, until only Lee and Tenten were left. So wanna get a soda? Tenten curiously asked Lee. Yes. Lee boomed swinging Tenten off her feet and into another direction. Naruto walked through a partially light forest, the sunlight peered through the trees and glared into Naruto's eyes it hurt Naruto shielded his eyes from the harsh sun rays. He snuggled down besides a sloping tree for comfort, he thought over the previous actions of his morning, the time was now 1.30 pm, Naruto had a strange feeling in the pit of his stomach. I think silence. Naruto stopped before clutching his stomach and continuing to talk to himself I think I told them too early. The feeling was a guilt. No anger. No it was something like remorse, wow I didn't know I knew that word. Naruto clutched his stomach tighter, it was like fire was burning inside him Naruto hissed as the pain only intensified, he was almost drawing blood as his blunt nails dug into his stomach. Naruto hissed again and fell forward onto the ground, the pain was like a fiery knife in his stomach that was trying to stab and burn through him. This isn't remorse or the kaiwu by Naruto choked out, every second the pain seemed to only intensify, and breathing was getting harder. What is this? Am I sick? Naruto's fingers ghosted over his curse seal, it was sensitive it hurt to just brush his fingers over it while he was in this state. Are you alright? A soft placid voice echoed through his ears. 
Naruto looked up to see brown eyes staring back at him. It was his old father-like figure Aruka. Naruto gasped and rapidly tried to cover his scars, but Aruka had already seen them and was gaping at him. Sorry if his eyes aren't brown. Then Naruto Aruka stuttered to himself. Naruto gave a nod. Aruka rubbed his fingers slowly over Naruto's soft and scarred cheeks, as if he would disappear out of pain sight. Naruto had completely forgotten about his searing pain in his stomach, tears formed in the corners of Aruka's eyes and spilled down his cheeks. Aruka's happiness soon turned into blind fury, he pulled Naruto by his collar, so he was staring deep into his blue orbs. Why are you back? You're dead. Aruka yelled at him, hot tears of rage still running down his cheeks. Aruka I I Naruto cleared his throat and started over I never died it's me I'm here it's not an illusion nor a ghost. Naruto spoke like a mature adult, Aruka couldn't believe it be but your funeral. Was a fake Naruto finished for him with a sigh. Aruka let go of Naruto's shirt and fell backwards onto his backside, his hands were trembling in fear and shock, Naruto had betrayed him not only faking his death, but by not being aware of his whereabouts or that he had returned. Do the others know? Was the first thing Aruka asked after their large silence. Yeah he no gossip Naruto sighed, sadly. You never wanted them to know. Haruka asked, quite surprised. Well right now it seems they knew far too soon Naruto mumbled, more to himself than Aruka. I wasn't meant to stay here, but soon a day Bachan put me under the watchful eye of the Ichiha bastard. Haruka chuckled, even though he has grown he still has his childish instincts Aruka seemed to have spaced off, so Naruto was waiting, surprisingly, patiently for him to come back down to earth. Haruka Naruto muttered into his ear, waving a hand in front of his face. Ah sorry I kinda spaced off Aruka stammered with a nervous smile. Naruto just grinned at him it's okay. Naruto reassured. Aruka still felt like this was all a dream and he would be waking up any minute now fortunately that moment never came, Naruto was really there living and breathing in the flesh. Aruka pulled Naruto into a tight embrace, fresh tears now running down his old tear stints. It's so good to see you again Aruka's voice cracked through his tears. Naruto patted Aruka's back for comfort it's good to see you too Aruka Naruto could feel tear welling in his eyes, but he wouldn't let them fall. Aruka pulled back and wiped away his tears, his eyes were slightly tinged with red. Aruka gave Naruto a warm smile, which Naruto kindly returned. Well I better get going Aruka sighed as he got up and dusted off the back of his pants and knees. Okay, see you around. Naruto waved Aruka off as he slowly disappeared into the forest mist. As soon as the unexpected meeting with Aruka was off of Naruto's mind the pain that was just a gentle numbness was now burning him intensely again. Naruto hissed as he jumped to his feet and began pacing around the forest, furiously looking for something he didn't know what just something to help the burning, then he saw it, a small lake wasn't far away. Naruto picked up his pace, no matter how much cursing left his mouth or how much pain it caused him, he continued to run all the way to the lake, Naruto hastily pulled off his clothing and shoes before he slid into the freezing water. The water eased the fire in his stomach, he splashed the water on his face after he noticed he was being to get a slight fever, Naruto sighed happily, as the burning subsided he leapt out of the water, has pulled his dry clothes over his damp body, making them cling to his body slightly. MMM I guess I'll just walk around aimlessly for a while Naruto mumbled to himself and began to walk around. This forest is a lot bigger than I thought Naruto sighed, throwing his hands behind his head. Naruto walked around in any old direction for a good long time, he had that sick sense he was being followed, when Naruto heard slight rustling came from bushes behind himself, on reaction, he grabbed a kunai and called out cautiously, who's there? Come out. The rustling continued before a small girl, around the age of 9 or maybe 10 with long brunette hair and ruby red eyes, appeared from behind the bush, she looked scared and frightened only then did Naruto realize he was still holding his kunai in a menacing manner. He placed the kunai away and beckoned for the girl to come closer, the girl hesitantly came closer as Naruto knelt down to her height. Why are you out here little girl? It dangerous you know Naruto asked, placing his hands on the girl's shoulders. The girl nodded I do but I got lost she mumbled to Naruto, worry tinting her words. How? Naruto questioned. Well I was chasing my puppy, Pachiko, and I got lost she sounded if she was about to break into tears, could you help me get back home? Naruto smiled warmly to the girl and nodded sure I will, where do you live? Um north of here she began to get a bit braver while speaking with Naruto. Okay come on. Naruto stood up and grabbed her hand, he used his ninja instincts to find out which way was north. Silence had completely engulfed the two, the young girl tried her hardest to keep up at Naruto's pace, or else he would start dragging her across the ground so what's your name, little girl? It's Mariko, she said brightly, she left Naruto hand, and was now smiled, and bouncing beside him what's yours sir? It's Naruto he smiled at the bubble of joy known as Mariko. You have a nice name Naruto-kun she smiled brightly at Naruto who returned her smile with a grin. 
They continued to walk beside each other before a small runty house appeared from behind the trees. Naruto looked down at Mariko, who was jumping up and down with happiness, this was obviously her house. A boy near Naruto's age was frantically running around the area, yelling inaudible words everywhere, Mariko piped up with a wave to him. Ani chan Mariko yelled out with a wave. Then Mariko? The boy turned around, the boy's face brightened as he bounded over to Mariko and pulled her into an embrace Baka. I thought I would never see you again. Ani chan im fine, thanks to Naruto kun Mariko gestured towards Naruto who was standing beside the two. The boy placed Mariko on the ground and looked into Naruto's blue eyes Naruto. Naruto perked up as he heard his name why yes. He stood up and bowed at Naruto thank you so much for finding Mariko I wouldn't have forgiven myself if I had lost her too. Do? Naruto questioned. Nah, Naruto kun wait. I have something I would like to give you. Mariko squealed. You don't have to Naruto was wasting his breath Mariko was already too far away to hear him. Im you and by the way you and held out his hand and Naruto shook it with a smile. Nice to meet you Naruto smile faltered if you don't mind me asking what did you mean by two. You inside well you see about two years ago my mother and father died in an accident orphaning me and Mariko. Oh oh I'm sorry for asking Naruto felt guilt rush through him. No, no don't worry as long as Mariko is home and safe I don't mind talking about this with you you and replied confidently. Naruto kun. Mariko reappeared clutching something tight in her grasp here. Then Mariko Naruto and you and stuttered in unison as she presented Naruto with his gift. It was a long silver chain, and off hung the bottom was a beautiful ruby red pendant, Mariko threw it over his head, so it hung loosely around his neck. Naruto was lost for words, this gift was beautiful he couldn't possibly allow the young girl to part with something so gorgeous, Naruto was about to protest when small hands clamped over his mouth. Please take it so you can remember me, I would have died out there if it wasn't for you Mariko spoke very mature for a nine-year-old. Mariko I can't possibly Naruto mumbled from behind her hands. Please it would mean Suo much to me if you kept it she stated with a smile, Naruto was about to protest to the girl again, but the look in her eyes said she wouldn't take no for an answer. Okay thank you very much Mariko-chan it will defiantly remind me of your beautiful eyes, Naruto smiled as he ran a hand through her brunette hair and stared into her blood-red eyes. Mariko blushed and twirled her foot in the dirt tea thank you. No, thank you Naruto got up, smiled and nodded before turning on his heel and walking away. Mariko climbed onto her brother's shoulder and waved excitedly at Naruto please come visit us sometime. I'm sure I will. Naruto grinned and waved back at them. Make sure you do or Mariko will hunt you down you and smirked as Naruto sent him a playful glare. Don't worry, I will as soon as the mother hens lets me outside more often. Naruto laughed, he was referring to Sasuke and Tsunade. Mother hen. Mariko asked Yuen, who just lifted his free shoulder in a half shrug. I'm back. Naruto announced, expecting the Achiha Manor to be empty. Do you know what time it is? Sasuke appeared from the shadows of a wall and spoke in a warning tone. But and 22 pm why do you ask? Naruto spoke casually to the Achiha. Then fucking 22 pm. Why are you back so late? Sasuke screamed at the blonde. D Sasuke, you act as if you care Naruto smirked as he saw the Achiha prodigy's cheeks flush. Well, I need to look after you Hokage's orders Sasuke weaseled his way out of the truth, wink, wink, nudge, nudge get a three. Sure bastard sure Naruto smirked again as he took off his shoes. What's this? Sasuke questioned almost choking the blonde by grabbing a hold of the pendant around his neck. The girl gave it to me after I helped her get back home Naruto smiled, remembering the girl's glistening ruby orbs. The girl, huh? Sasuke said, letting the pendant fall onto Naruto's chest it's nice. I know Naruto smiled again and headed up the stairs no nightmares tonight we hope. The fake arrangements have been told a sound nin announced to someone. Perfect the man spoke in a spine shivering tone and licked his fangs tomorrow we move. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.